2023 marks 100 years since the birth of Jean-Paul Riopelle. This fall, Heffel is incredibly fortunate to offer many masterpieces by this important artist spanning his career and his use of multiple different media. We thought we would take a moment to discuss the important contributions to art and art history that were made by this very important Canadian painter. Four years between 1947 and 1951 for Riappel are perhaps the most fascinating from an art historical standpoint, as it's really these years that form the direction his painting would take into the next decade. And as we know, the 1950s for Riappel really is the decade of the great mosaics. We are thrilled to be offering composition number two by Jean-Paul Riappel this fall season. It's very exciting to be able to speak about a moment in the history of art where one of our own Canadian artists was really at the forefront of an international rise. Riappel's art stands out as a compelling bridge between abstract expressionism, which flourished primarily in New York City, and the painterly expressions of the avant-garde in Paris. Riappel's association with New York extends beyond personal connections. There, his work was exhibited at the prestigious Pierre Matisse Gallery. During the 1950s, Riappel had increased contact with prominent members of the New York School. Pierre was, of course, the youngest son of the famous artist Henri Matisse. His gallery was a virtual hub for the promotion of American and European modern art. What is remarkable about Riappel during this early period is how fluid he was with his affiliations to movements that were breaking away from past artistic traditions, both in Canada and in Europe. One of the most noteworthy connections Riopel had with the ABEX movement was his long and tumultuous relationship with Joan Mitchell. The two met in France in 1955 and continued their relationship for 25 years. Not only were they lovers, but also rivals, and undoubtedly pushed each other's artistic practices to new heights. By 1951, the year our painting was created, Riopelle had already earned numerous accolades. Riopelle would soon join forces with the art dealer Pierre Lowe, who was the owner of Gallery Pierre, and he was already promoting the major Cubist and Surrealist artists of the day, which included Picasso and Miro. What I find fascinating about Riopelle is his lifelong resistance to categories. When talking about abstract painting, two categories are sometimes brought up. One is a figure ground, approach and the other is a all over or field approach. What that means is one type of painting has a sense of subject in an environment or is more flattened with no sense of a subject or space. Riopelle's abstract watercolors from the 1940s had a sense of figures within a space but that eventually flattened, and that resulted in intense and overwhelming walls of color, like composition number two. It is really about the act of painting without any preconceived ideas that produce an immediacy and keep these works fresh and modern, even to this day. And this is quite apparent when you stand in front of masterpieces like composition number two. His gestures in the early 1950s could be tighter and more controlled, but that gradually loosened into longer, more organic, more fluid applications. Like you see in Sans Titre in 1962. Those long, fluid applications are actually very much like the tactile surfaces of the sculptures like Ibu. And that artistic flexibility extended across his lifelong career working with work on paper and print work. While Riappel's work shares affinity with New York abstract expressionism, it is important to note that he always retained his own distinct style. Regardless of the medium, Riopelle was an artist who was never bound by categories or by preconception, but was always led by his most urgent artistic needs. 